right, now we're going to do a forge weld. Nice and hot, fluxed, and here it comes. Looks stuck to me. So, so why didn't you hit it really hard and get all the sparks flying everywhere and grunt and make all these noises like it's really a challenge? It doesn't take a lot to, to forge well. Uh, basically, it's the, more, the, the higher the temperature, the less force you need. The lower the temperature, the more force you need. It's nice and hot right now, so it doesn't take a lot of force to get it to stick. Once it's all stuck, and it's all welded together, then we'll start drawing it out. Then we'll put some force to it. Welded. Where once there were four, there is now one. So you had blister steel, what do you have now? I now have single refined shear steel. When we're all done, hopefully we'll have double or triple refined shear steel. So how, how do you go from single to double? Uh, welding, dry welding. Work. That's how you go from, from single to double, and do more work from double to triple. Now we're going to do another weld. We've already welded it the four bars once, so that was shear steel. Now we're cut, folded, we're going to weld again, which will turn it into double shear steel. This is the initial weld of double shear. Double refined. All right, we're going to do a, a little test quench here, of heating it up. It's above critical. Not really sure what the temperature is, but we know it's above critical. It's just a test. We're going to put it in the water here, just water, and uh, quench it just to see if we got enough carbon and what the file will do to it. Hopefully the file skates and doesn't cut. Here we go. Get through that. Yeah, you can hear it. It starts it skating right there. Set it here on the anvil and get some pressure on it. We got through that outer layer of scale, which cut off, but you can hear the file skating, so we got carbon. All right, well here we are with finished product. We've got uh, double shear over here, and uh, we have actually have it out into some sheet form, which is going to be very handy. And this is uh, triple shear here, which is uh, also you see, nice and thin, but many, many layers and folds and welds. And uh, this is the way it was done. Uh, Sheffield, England, uh, Saint Etienne, France. The, the trade knives were made out of material like this, made this way. Again, Illinois and Wisconsin. <laughs> we're doing it here.
So um, we're here with Bob. He's all clean, and I am Finally. not. <laughs> um, so so today we did uh, the blister steel, the blister steel, and shear steel from that. Yep. And you're going to use that in knives that you do for for your your knife business. That's correct. That's correct. I'm going to be doing reproduction trade knives out of shear steel. And a trade knife is well, a trade knife is, and I've gotten many originals, and there were uh, English and French trade knives that were. Uh, traded with the natives in the 1700s, and they're still being excavated today. Here, here in the U.S. Here in the U.S., uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, anywhere the voyagers and Indian trade happened for the furs, mm -hmm. and they're still being excavated. And those are the reproductions that I do. And, and they can look at your work where? Uh, my website rnrknives.com. Rnrknives.com. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I'll have a link to it. Uh, down at the bottom of the page here. Uh, thanks for coming by. Thank you. Good to have you. Take care. Been fun. Come back. Will hey, do. Thanks, Liz, for holding the camera. Glad to do it. And uh, you know, I'm going to try to do more of this in the future. Uh, more interesting things, so you don't have to see me all working all the time. You'll have other people to watch. And uh, bye. Hello, I'm Richard Fur, Door County Forge Works. I've had many requests over the years for more instruction on how to make steel. So over the next little while, I'll be producing far more comprehensive steel making videos. Uh, this was just a tease, but there will be a complete how-to video on blister and shear steel making, walking you through the pitfalls, what to avoid, what yields a better product. I will also do the same for bloomery smelting, which is where you make a clay chimney stack and do charcoal and iron ore to produce steel and irons. And we'll continue that with crucible steel making and then work our way into Woot's crucible steel. So there'll be four videos coming out soon and I'll lay it all out from start to finish how you can make knives from your own steel. So stay tuned. If you have any particular questions, don't be afraid to contact me. Be well. Bye-bye.